And we're on, are we on? Yes, we're on. Welcome everyone to more Disco Elysium. So, where were we? So last time, right, we went here on the... for... We opened this trash bag, if I remember correctly. Just checking if it's recording yet. And there's this Kuno dude boy. And inside the trash can I found my police document and the clothes of the deceit. So I'm going to ask the, the owner dude about them. But I'm really running out of time and I don't have money so I'll probably sleep on the streets. I don't know what will happen. Oh, there's a new person here. I'll be back to you. Let's talk to him. Can I help you? Here's your trash container key. Thanks. I hope you found what you were looking for. I found the victim clothes. How strange. I certainly didn't put them there. Mm. Oh, sleepwalking. Did someone on your staff have put them there? Sylvie had the keys before I got here, and I can vouch for her. I can vouch for all my stuff. None of us would tamper with the crime scene. Well, maybe you were sleepwalking. I think fugue states are more your forte, officer. <laughs> Fuck you. Who else has keys to the trash company? The trash collection service? CS Municipal. I don't see why they would put anything in the trash, though. Ah, the elusive CS Municipal. I doubt we'll be able to track down who was sent here last and when. This will have to be one of those little threads that solves itself down the road. Thank you, anyway. Okay. Yes. Goodbye. Uh, I still have that grin on my face. Let's talk to this dude. All about money, you know. Get us spend money to make money. Money is what really matters. They say money can buy you happiness. But that just means you don't have enough money. You don't have to invest your money wisely. You have to. You can buy stocks with money. And then use those stocks to make everyone more money. That way you'll have enough when you grow too old to make new money. Real estate is the graveyard where tired old money goes to rest. Money is what literally makes the world turn. The laws of money are just like the laws of nature. Unpaid labor doesn't net you any money. There is no such thing as free money. Money is all about numbers. Money is actually all about trust. It's all about money, you know. You gotta spend money to make money. Okay, it's repeating. Hmm. Okay. What's here? Bottle of rum has been knocked over. Beautiful dark liquid is spilling out. Talk to him. Sleeping, dog worker, a man is sleeping at the table wearing mud cake. On the counter, Oops. rolled out of his open hand. Mud cake you see and rolled back down of over. Medicine. The back of his shirt says Wild Pines, encircled by a logo with a three. Physical? I don't have any physical. Uh, let's the man things. does not mind. You probably need them more than he does. Okay, cool. I have some moral stuff. I'll try to wake him up. You gently shake his shoulder, but nothing happens. Okay. Oh, well. Let's talk to him. Anything? Yes. Nothing. Fine, let's leave and go check something else. Oh, I can see the... Uh, okay. Not here, fisherman shark. Okay, there was... Oh, wait. This on the... Mirror. Encyclopedia formidable. Mirror. Electrochemistry impossible. Kuno, empathy legendary. Hang Meg and Duelist legendary. Trash container physical. Okay, I don't want this. Damage ledger interfacing medium. What is it? Sleeping dock worker. What is this? Damaged ledger. 
Let's go check what this thing brought us all about. You're just afraid because you're better than you. I will fight any one of you who work one on one. Let's go. Asks a man with jolly eyes tilting his head. You're hazy on the notion of a scab. Smells like politics, though. Maybe it's got something to do with the flask he reaches for from time to time. What exactly is a scab? A kind of a worm. Content with mere survival. They come, they want to do our job for shittier pay. Screwing over both themselves and us. Nice Everybody issue. loses. Hold on, where did they all come from? It's me. Somewhere in the ground, I think. Okay, you don't seem to like them much. Gotta be bloody stupid or freaking evil to scab. Or I guess scared, maybe. But scared of what? Of who? He looks at the mask, squinting his eyes as if trying to ascertain what they're scared of. Personally, I'd rather beg than scab. If the gentleman shouting on the street came begging, maybe they'd have gotten something. Not better than begging, come on. Try talking to them. Hmm. Maybe I want him on my side. Uh, let's try this. We'd explain the matters, but they don't listen. This lot would be reasonable and go home if the big guy wasn't riling them up all the time. I'm not a scab, I'm a cop. I was just messing with you. No one's ever seen a cop scab. Hmm. Imagine, you cops going on a strike, but then another cop comes in and says, let us cop for less money. <laughs> ah. Speaking of, what brings the RCM here? To the wild north? Come to see the strife? Uh, okay, yeah. Investigating murder, huh? That sounds like a lot of hard work. Mm -hmm. You'd never see me investigating a murder. It's actually very fun and easy. I don't believe you. Post mm -hmm. Laventurier said the same thing. They tried to get me to be their postman. So fun, so easy, they said. <laughs> it's just walking. It wasn't. I'm doing much better here at the harbor. Being an honest union man with a lot of free time on his hands. What's the strike about you know, anyway? serious business. I'm sure the big boss will be glad to tell you. You'll have to ask him first. He's a chatty guy. Wants to talk about the strike. Return once you've met the union boss and are on a better footing with the organization. Okay, I return. I need to know what's behind these gates I'm exploring. My friend, I respect the right to roam. The open range awaits. He gazes over the roundabout with a glint of laundry. Does this mean you can let me through the gate? I don't operate in that capacity. I'm not a grantor of passage. The passage grants itself. If it's all so simple, why don't the strike breakers just go up the stairs? Simple, I just Aye. walk in. Walk right past Measurehead and go in. Past Measurehead? Yeah, the two and a half meter tall Semini Supremus is there. Oops. Walk right past him, then right. press the button to unlock the door, uh -huh. then go past him again, uh -huh. and you enter the arbor through the office. Esta. So you're saying it's quite difficult? Don't worry, I'm sure it's not completely impossible. For example, you could best measure head in a physical confrontation, or you could convert to a Semini supremacist worldview. Or, hmm, maybe it actually is completely impossible. Has anyone here ever bested him in a physical confrontation? Not yet, no. He's incredibly strong. Has any of those caps tried converting to his world? John Luke himself would say the philosophy has proven overly heroic for the scabs to convert to. Not enough intuition. Got it. Sure. I'll come back to him. I won't ask him about money now. Maybe after I talk to the boss. Let's go talk to the boss. First, let me try to collect some information. The lorry is probably stored fuel here. Now they're stored boots. Anyone else I can talk to first? Foreign car kept it in kept in good condition. What's this? 
horseback monument. An old monument stand in the middle of the traffic island pointing towards the sea. It looks as it's been reassembled piece by piece, secured and mounted in the air with the aid of num numerous ropes and rolls. Who is this? It's silver plaque on the statue pedestal reads, I am Philip III, the squanderer, the greatest of the Philippian kings of Revachon, son of Philip II, the opulent father of Philip IV, the insane. Encyclopedia, what did this king do? Yeah, let's try it. Even by the standards of the Philippian kings, old sumptuous Philip was known for his profligacy. In what way? Well, he blew through the whole national treasury, starting the decline of one of the penultimate century's greatest superpowers, the suzerain of Revachol. His own maladministration foreshadowed the fall of the monarchy during the anti-centennial revolution, an end to his family line and the monarchy on the Insulindian Isola. Yeah, how did he manage to blow through the entire national Stories country? have it that he had his bedroom converted into a treasure chamber, where he stored unfathomable wealth, Krugerrands, bars of gold, ornate weaponry, armor, and various chalices. Okay. There were whispers he slept on a huge pile of gold-dipped feathers, like some obese dragon instead of a bed, like a normal person. I would like to sleep on gold, Hustler Stein. But wait, you haven't even heard about his fabled cocaine addiction. The what now? You see, old Philippe wasn't just good at squandering the national treasury on gold and ceremonial weaponry. He was also a prodigious snorter of nose candy. Okay. So he was addicted to those candy, a bloated druggie? That's what the revolutionary said 150 years later. Right before they emptied out the royal mausoleum and dumped his majesty's mortal remains in the Insulindian Bay. Okay, and what is those candy? Cocaine. Of course. This is a lot to process. His majesty's courtiers said it helped him connect with the hmm. higher realms. Okay, where is he buried now? Beneath the cold waters of the Insulindian Bay, Bay, thrown there by the revolutionaries after they cleaned out the royal mausoleum. Okay, what happened to the statue? The original was blown apart by communards, then further damaged during the landing of the coalition's airships during the turn of the century revolution, when Martinez was leveled. Okay. Most historians think the coalition's hasty landing may have ultimately saved the statue. If the communards had more time, they would have reduced it up to even finer pieces. And who restored the monument? Some years ago, a group of liberal, artistically inclined individuals, designers mostly, thought it would be ironic to restore the statue of the most wasteful ruler of Revachol in the poorest part of the city. The statue is supposed to capture the moment it was blown apart like an instant frozen in time, a rare butterfly trapped in amber, floating on a sea of shit. Mm. That's such a bad idea. People in Martinez tend to agree, as do many prominent art critics and thought leaders with more nuanced social awareness than the young ironists. I don't know why I said that, but... Just felt like a better. Those critics might have it wrong, though. Challenging. There's more to it than just ironism, but you can't say what precisely. Perhaps this art mystery will be solved at a later time. Conceptualization. Philip the Third, the squanderer, however, with his bronze face up in the air, doesn't seem concerned about what the hoi polloi think of him in death. Not that he ever did in life either. Okay. Good to know. Maybe it will come in handy. A bold slogan Humanox covers the track. Oh, there's something here. Tank top. So this is physical, this is conceptualization, and minus one to suggestion. Uh, 
Look at me. <laughs> yeah, I'll wear it for now. I don't want conceptualization. Or maybe. Okay. Uh, what else? Hey, I'm rich. Who are you? A small, wrinkled woman does not greet you. She nods along to something on her radio. A photograph is clutched in her hands, and there is a warm smile Just on her face. The photo, an ambrotype from the turn of the century, as golden as her smile. It's the warmth of a winter night's fire. Maybe she could give you comfort and shelter, some cigarettes and food money. Maybe she's your... Mamma? <laughs> Excuse me, ma'am. I would like to ask you some No questions. response. Wherever this woman is, your words fail to reach her. Let's try with grandma. Nothing. Her smile just keeps widening. Her hair is gray. I need like some lead. place to sleep. Snap your fingers in front of her face. Wait. She's just a distracted old woman. Better to leave her alone. Why? Why? I just told you why. The woman still has her eyes fixed on the photograph in her hands. In the background, the radio plays. Okay. Nothing else here. A star's Riker, one of the finest Jimps made motor carriages ever. An oldie, but a goldie. We'll drive these. Not many people outside of Grad and Revachol West, too, it appears. Hey, Kim, check this out. Estash Raiko KK2. That's a classic model. Never thought I'd see another one repainted after what happened last time. Hold on. Maybe I can impress him. <laughs> so I'm asking myself, do I know what happened last time? No. Only that the motor carriage is Thank typically you, baby blue. The colors of Sigismund the Great, an ancient Jemsk ruler. His banners were famously zephyr and white. The colors of the stars Raiko. Let me guess what happened last time, Kim. Blue and white are the color of Zemsk. Someone painted it, got his Zemsk mad, and boom, murder happened. That, well... Yes, exactly it, more or less. Except it mm -hmm. was a crowd of them. Tore him out of the vehicle and ran him over with his own tires. Yeah, they best. said it was an honor killing, Hussar style. The Jim's community protested the trial, Jim's, flying the colors. Jim's. 5,000 came to so protest. That's it. That's a Correction, 4,395. The fourth largest public protest of a criminal trial in Revachol. Need to correct you, Kim. Is that so, officer? I'll take you at your word. Who are the Jaimsk community? People we are paid to protect. Let's leave it at that. Okay. What they sentenced the killers Four to? years for murder in reunion. The perps were remorseful. Their sorry knocked eight years off the sentence. That's the system. The prisons in the Greater Revachol Industrial Harbor are already full. Prisoners are expensive to maintain. The longer the sentence, the larger the cost. Okay. Kim, could our hanged man have been the driver of this car? I tried to avoid drawing far gone conclusions like this before actually examining the body. But my initial guess is the two are unrelated. Interesting. Before we proceed, I've got an opinion on this pain job. Yes, detective? I think it looks better brown and black. Okay. I'm not going to un or kill anyone over this, but I've seen it blue and white. It's much better that way. Okay. Oh, there's money on the ground. Come on, I'm richer. What's this? A lorry stuck in the traffic jam. 
This big, heavy, grad-made machine is well kept for such an old machine. Look in the, window. the windows are clear. They've been recently washed. You can see a lorry man's cabin with personal belongings, stickers, insignia. What kind of stickers and The driver has adorned his space with a substantial collection of peculiar paraphernalia. Proclamations about honor, strength, and purity are glued to various panels. What about the back seat? The back end of the cabin has a small perch to sleep, large ashtrays. There are several suns and wheels sewn to the curtains. Maybe I can use that to sleep tonight. A book with ragged edges catches your notice. The front cover features a large muscular man. The title reads, Man from Eomdal in the Lost City of the Pygmies. Eomdal. Racist nationalist paraphernalia. Not unusual in this part of town. This is our guy. I think this lorry belongs to our tough guy. Likely, yes. This guy's proud of who he is. Drapes it all over his machine. Okay. Uh, honest work, honest pay. Let's talk to the boss. Bastards! We have a right to work! The man yells towards the harbor gate. His voice is the loudest of the lot and oddly screechy for a man his size. What's going on here? Hold up and stay frosty, everyone. Cops are here. The broad shoulder alpha man turns to you. He's a full head taller than everyone else. You here to fuck with us? No. Beat the honest worker down. Why should I? We're here to fight for a cause. Stripes usually have problems with people who have causes. The... Okay, then I'm thinking. Good. I We're don't care. Fighting for a cause here. Right to work! Right to work! Besides, we're not that different. It helps if people see us talking, cops and strike breakers together. Shows authorities are on our side. Builds confidence. What kind of cause are we talking rights about? Rights of people, rights of workers, to have gainful employment, to make a salary, and feed their families. His manner of speaking is wooden, the tone of voice bland and uninspired. Almost as if compiling replies from a set of learned phrases. Okay. I don't think I've chosen any side. Might be yet. time. Don't let the fat bastards tread on you. Cops tend to side with the higher ups, but you're essentially still workers. I don't trust cops, but I can see you understand the right to work! Right to work! Regardless, I have some questions for you. Maybe you should ask them the questions. Like, why we're not allowed to make a living here? Shame on you! We have families to feed, you piece of shit. Point the finger at the man sitting on the railing. So do we, Scott. What is that? What's that? Breakthrough dawn? Okay, long, so long way home. I'll check it in a bit. Uh, oh, Luis, come. I want to get into the harbor too. Have fun. <laughs> Union shits are on full strike. Don't think they're going to let you through the gates. I'm trying to meet their fat boss. I'm interviewing people about a murder that took place here behind the hostel cafeteria there. I know nothing about a murder. Absolutely nothing. Wouldn't put it past these harbor bugs. They'd do anything to stay alive. Right to work! It's shameful. Cops doing nothing. You should bring back up, open up the gates for us. Blockading gainful employment for workers is a crime. This really isn't my area of expertise. We are not picking a side in this just yet, sir. Pity. Let us work! What is a strike? When a bunch of ungrateful, lazy cockroaches can't get their act together, decide to block honest work for other people. What do the strikes want? Beats me. They mumble nonsense about boardrooms and workers' rights, while we have the... Right to 
Work! There's something odd in the way he carries himself. His set of clothing looks vaguely mismatched. The different pieces of the attire seem ill-fitting. Ill-fitting? What does that mean? His shirt is far too small and an unpleasantly tight fit, while the overalls held up by a belt seem to fit a man with much more corpulence. Wearing new cloth? He ignores your question, choosing instead to turn to the emaciated workers, raising both fists in the air. The clothes are obviously not his. Silence is the answer. There's something off in here, but he won't say what. Who are these strike bearers? Honest men and women, with rights to work, to be useful, not toys for corporate interests. The man runs a hand through his steadily graying military hair. We came here to help the harbor run smoothly in time of crisis. If Union fucks don't want work, they ought to let in those who do want work. I have a question. Why do all these men follow your leadership? You think they follow because I'm big and loud? No. They follow the rules of the market, the rules of the economy, because they were Given a job to do! You've been talking to him for quite a while now. Something is off with this guy. Ask him where he's from. Okay, I gotta ask, where exactly are you from? What's it to you? Curiosity going to figure out the strike mass routine part of the investigation. I thought you looked real familiar for a second there. Curiosity going to figure out the strike man. Big mess caused by union greed. But I only fight for the rights of people. Every once in a while, it's like you can see glimpses of another guy under the guise of this fighter for jobs. He seems a more brutal, cunning, and suspicious person. Just a hunch. Or you just might be paranoid. Already got that. I'm interested in your background. We're all workers, right? Workers stick together. Came from the eminent domain in Jamrock. Backgrounds in odd jobs, heavy lifting, cargo hauling, bouncer work. I know the drill. Bouncer where? I frequent lots of bar. Maybe it's one I know. Worked at Territorial. Ring a bell? Yeah, I think it, I've been there. Uh huh. It was a long time ago. What exactly is your goal here? We were promised work. We'd be in there, working, if the bastards hadn't shut the gates. And you are unable to breach the entrance? Main gate's locked. Would take heavy ordnance to bust it open. Could try to get in through the secretary's office. Doors locked. The guards blocking the way to the access panel. And I don't mean the scrawny mess punk either. I mean head measurer. Or whatever he is. Wait, head measurer? Huge Semenes guy standing up there on the overhead passage. Won't let anyone by. Semenes? The access panel is right behind him. Him is Semenes. How bad could one guy be? You seem scared. Bad. Standing on a narrow bridge, he's got a strategically advantageous position. And he's trained. I don't know how the Union has a trained killer up there. But that one's no joke. And my men are tired and hungry. They're workers, not fighters. Have you tried storming in like all of you? Why don't you go arrest them instead? I'm sure they've done plenty of criminal shit. They have that look. It would be better for the neighborhood if you went home. At least for now. If you can't get in anyway. No! They will give up eventually. Or get drunk. Leave the button unguarded. Then we charge. The man rubs his jaw, a perfectly lightly, lightly bearded square wedge. I'm just going to leave. Lonesome. Long way home. Here we go. Home awaits. Walk past Station 41 and through the market, past the Boogie Street spearhead to the other side of the lake, the frozen eye at the center of the district. Then, 
past the video rental store on the corner. There, at the end of a street lined with pine trees, a small house no larger than a matchbox. 11 Voyager Road. You no longer live there. Those times are gone. And so are those people. Why did you come here? Why are you still here? And where's the dealer? You have to get back to work. That's all you have now. A learning cap for perception race to five speed gives one sigh. Cool. So I have one extra psi and speed, what speed? And I, the perception was right to five. Cool. So I need to check what's this. Yeah, this is the solution. Uh, Wait, why do I have one? Oh, this is empathy. Okay. So I have two skill points I can put yet. Uh, where's perception? Okay, perception is to five. Nice. Okay, okay. I don't want to level up anything yet. Maybe I'm missing dialogues if I don't level up. I'm a bit short on money right now. Can you give me some of it? Sure thing, my friend. I can help you out. He flips a coin towards you. Try to catch it. The coin ah, slips by your outstretched fingers and falls to the ground. Oh, I'm sorry. Didn't mean to throw it like that. It's a thing we harbor folk do, passing around cargo and such. It was not meant as provocation or ridicule. Lieutenant Fine. Kitsuragi picks up the coin and hands it to you. Appreciate it. Right, always glad to help out the RCM. One We're real. not in the same branch, you and I. Uh, Humans, I mean. Still not slithering scabs. Shit, Tom. Good talking to you, Natalif. Ah, so I want to level up. I don't know if I want to go a glass cannon build or a balanced build. Those are good. Inland Empire was good too. Uh, I'm thinking to put a point in subword pair. It's always useful to lock pick a door or something. But I only have two in motoric. Uh, Inland Empire, Volition, Endurance. Take the blows, don't let the world kill you. Drama, Visual Calculus, Rhetoric. one here and one in sub warfare okay I'm changing those can I change them if I want no okay that's fine so how do I go here wait wait maybe it's from here Notice in case of strike, press button behind guard. A hermetically sealed door locked by electronic means. There's no lock picks or door kicking this one. Okay. If I go here, what happens? Where do you go? Let's 
say that. <laughs> okay. Something here. It has GMIH. Shoal Industrial Harbor. Measurehead makes no matches. Measurehead. Everyone should try to be. I dream about it all the time. More than enough to please a woman. Not soft and weak like other men. No match. Measurehead. Let's talk to him. Nobody betrays your degeneracy. What the fuck is this? Yeah, Measurehead. His body totally betrays his degeneracy. Okay. What do you mean my body betrays you my degeneracy? You have succumbed to Al-Ghul. Al-Ghul? You reek of it. An invisible sword of Al-Ghul emerges from your throat. You cannot see it, but others can. It is making the woman in my company sick. <laughs> Wait, uh, Al Ghul? Yes, Al Ghul. He means alcohol. Oh, you mean alcohol? Correct, my small skull servant. Hmm. Al Ghul is an ancient Ilmaran poison, a parasitic fungus that has colonized your race. It is a trick the desert pygmies played on you for humiliating them and stripping them of their land. Okay. Intentionally fermented drinks have existed for 10,000 years. The Lil Maran people did not invent alcohol, it existed since the Neolithic. This is a fabrication the alchemists of Yizot and Bashir and the Holam al Ghul have fed your people. No one believes in it. Loser. That's probably right, yes, I'll have it. Good. There is a fleet nearby. Congratulate yourself with another drink. Mm. Your features are not yet congenitally the form enough. Do you see this this expression? Oh yeah, measure head. They look at him with eyes full of admiration that transcend the mere sexual. Well, your breath came. Is it really so bad? It's not good. It's like a rat crawled into your stomach, got <laughs> drunk, and drowned. <laughs> You're right, I'm a servant of alcohol, but I still need to enter. I don't have problem with alcohol, I just drink a little on the weekends. Your mouth moves, but the one who speaks is Al Ghul. <laughs> you are but a vessel for the ghoul now. Very little of yourself remains. Occidental Apollo Group B4 is done giving orders around here. The influence of the Am Sandwich race is waning. Am Sandwich race. Does this remind you of someone? The guy down there? First, let me make this clear. I'm not a drunk, I'm a cop. I just have a drink every now and then, everybody does. That fat racist over there pointed to the restroom. You just him after pumping some iron. I won't say that. I am the police and I need you to comply now. Take a step closer. No. The race stuff is unimportant here. I just need your help. Me do my job. Okay, first let me make things clear. I'm not drunk. I'm a cop. I just have drink every now and then. Every one does. The ethanol fungus is deep within your nervous system. Pulling the strings. Uh, ethanol fungus. You are merely its pooper All now. those metaphors. I see no oh, hope okay. for you. Ways to call you alcohol. The rest stuff is unimportant here. I uh... Begging for help. Attempting to pass fear for cooperation. How far the Occidental Ablo Group has fallen. Ablo Group. You were once a noble and powerful race. You gave the world eugenics, electricity, 
and powerful weapons of war like missiles and aerostatic aircraft. You made great gains in metallurgy, race theory, and statecraft. You dominated lesser cultures like the deformed Hemians and the inexplicably potato-obsessed Koikos. But now your ascent to the genetic summit has halted. You are obsessed with sadness and with frivolous pop culture. You will be superseded. Isn't that right, babe? It is, baby, yeah. You know it. There is a button right behind him, just out of reach. It must be the one that opens the door to the harbor. Push him. You're right about all this now. I just need to let me go the harbor. Enough with this begging. You should leave the stage of history with dignity by inviting the other races to a great world war. Bring your troops to the Seminine Islands and to Boogie Street and we will pulverize you. What the fuck? When you are gone, we will build a museum for you. The walls will be lined with bottles of Al Hul, your beloved beverage. Inside, we will store the oaths to homosexuality you call art and your microcephalic skulls. <laughs> there may be a peaceful solution to this. You could internalize Meshekhet's race theory. He would take you as one of his own. Okay. Wouldn't that mean I have to become a Semeni supremacist myself? Alright, good idea. The best idea. Yeah, the best. When your brain tells you it's the best idea, you know something is... something bad's gonna happen. You serve the Union, don't you? Aren't they white? Know anything about this mug? Show him the mug. Okay. What are those tattoos of your support to me? Or conceptualization medium 10. Subscribe to his advanced race theory. Physical instrument formula will knock him off. <laughs> what the fuck? Mm. Yeah, let's subscribe. I have. I'm glad I kept that uh, shirt that gave me conceptualization. Ask what kind of races there are first. Classification is core to this stuff. Okay. Measurehead, I am new to this world. Help me understand its races. I need to know what kind of different races are there. Do you? Whisper, this is for the thing. <sighs> you are obviously a liberal, say right? A polyculturalist. I can see it from your love of microtechnology and your sartorial choices. Not deny your friend the truth you have denied yourself. There are three categories of race. Tip A, the heroic races. Tip B, the servile races. And the vile CF race cauldron of pederasty. Which one do you need in the case of? My face. Those are the Simonies, the Areopagite, and the Occidentals, excluding the Mao, of course. The Mao are riddled with eczema to the point where they find it impossible to smile. They are all lactose intolerant, a common result of inbreeding. Fuck, I'm inbred. A receding genetic pool has led the Mao on reprehensible street parades. Mound cities like Stats Canal and Vredefort, wearing wooden clogs on their feet and little green tassels on their hats. Wait, who exactly are the Mound? You know them by the names of their nation states the Oranese, the Gottwaldians, and the Königsteiners. My people simply call them Mound. Mahun is a derogative oh. term for First World people of Gottwaldian descent. They do not all have eczema. Also, people of Katla, like the Sudu and the Uhu, are much more lactose intolerant. Okay, the wooden clogs though. In some municipalities of Morenier, people do wear shoes made of wood to street parades. Green, orange and even yellow tassels have also been seen on hats. 
The mound are proof that you can have too much occidental racial purity and tesocentric culture. Inbreathing has led to a lactose intolerance <laughs> of race whom no one can take seriously. Okay, who are type A then in your view? The Vesper Times and Messinians of Vesper and Messina. The ancient Meteorans of Meteo by the Golden Byzantic Sea. The Suren of Sur la Clé and even the North Königsteiners. All have type A race propensity. The other large mundial civilizations, the Mesk, are too yellow and oleaginous to count as a heroic race. True, they are violent and expansionist, but they have a glandular problem. He draws his finger across his face. Overproduction of sebum. Sebum is leaking into their brains, making them listen to El Mariachi. Eat toxic minced meat based food, which in turn only produces more sea. And who are the Semenese and Ario Ajit in this? As proven by the Maun and the Mesk, Occidental Tip A is in retrograde. The Semenese and the Ario Ajit are on the ascent. And the Semenese are? The indigenous people of this, the Insolindia. The Simonese inhabit the southern islands. He looks pretty hate from the stock we are on Ile de Fontaine. In Fontaine. And the Areopagites? The Areopagites are the master race of the Il Maran deserts. The Simonese are the descendants as, of the Areopagites. The we follow. came here during a heroic migration from the Il Mara to Anzuland, thousands of years before the lactose intolerant <laughs> mound of hidden occidentals discovered like this place. <laughs> Wait, didn't Il Maran desert pygmies invent alcohol and get pillaged just a short while ago? Weren't the Il Mar pillaged by my people and then Al Ghul happened and all that? No. Those were scimitar wielding race losers of Zarafa, Izet, and Bashir, with their Himi servants. Big difference. The Areopagites were fasting and conquering while this happened. You never penetrated the Western dunes. Jean, baby, you're on fire. Mm -hmm. I know, babe. What's the difference between the Semenese with the Areopagites? The Areopagites are sleek, long-headed. The Simonese are powerful, mesomorphic. The former is an immutable progenitor, unchanged since the super isola of pericarnasis. Ancient be. brains rest in their yeah, slender yeah, skulls. Yeah, yeah, blah, blah, blah. People say they're contemplating the beauty of the mystery. The latter is perfected and adapting. Together they form the Simeno Ariopagite or Simeopagite Super Race. That is all. There are no more Tip A races in the world. Nature was not capable of more. <laughs> Thank you, Nebuchadnezzar. So, what's the type B? Tip B are the Unneoic races, amorphous non competitors of the Great Race, the Koikos and the Vacholier. They are mud colored people. The Koikos of Grad, Yugo, Zimsk, Shes et al. are what you would call white officer in a suspect description. You said Koikos have been trained to identify them as white in official descriptions. Yes. To an untrained eye, the Koiko appear white and pinkish, like a hand on which. <laughs> but look into their eyes and you will see. They are of, of an indistinct color, and so is their skin. Unhealthy, muddy, and ashen. Pinkness is a racial quality that has to be earned through centuries of advanced ballistic warfare and cultural domination that the Grad people have undergone for drinking Al Rul and 
smoking the degenerate tobacco herb and for eating potato. What's wrong with potato? The koiko, the countless micronationalities of Grad are all inexplicably obsessed with potat. The only thing they the like Irish. More is divided into microscopic ethnostates, like political amoeba. Wouldn't he be one for ethnostates? You don't like ethnostates? <laughs> they are microscopic. The Seminario Pajit Superstate will cover the entire understanding around 5% percent Uninterrupted. From Auli Seminine to the Boreal Plateau of Katla. Its leaders will be the genetic epitome of the Seminese and Ariopajit stock, elected by nature. Not the base in a spoilage called Demos. And the Vacholiers you mentioned? The Vacholians, halfway between Tipa and the Racial called Ron. Two mixed to no right from wrong. You tried your degenerate little revolution, which was the single greatest failure committed by humans in our 82,000 year history on this planet. Is it 82,000 years that we've been recording history? You have very little idea of what is happening. But that seems a little off. I'm pretty sure history hasn't lasted that long. The mysteries of the people of this planet are a tragedy that has played out countless times over. Like a fever dream of skin, hair and bone. I like the music. Wake I up, my chest. Good one to use. I've heard about this revolution. Mistakes were made, but it was the right stuff you're wrong about. I won't say that. That revolution was perpetrated by degenerate left wings, marauder, not all the people of Rabashon. Yes. The revolution came to Rabashon from Grad in Zara's written potato cards. It is literally an illness, a prion disease that leaves the paraita frontal lobe ridden with holes. A soft, sponge-like mass of dementia, hallucination, and paranoia. The revolution is fatal familial insomnia. A hereditary prion condition passed from the Koiko to the Occidentals. But not sexually. Probably through trade roots and potato acid. The prime component of the potato plant. Enough of Tibet mediocrity. Not satisfied with the outcome. The vile CF race cauldron of Pederasti, please. Tips and the F are a museum of failed chimeric experiments and tragic maladaptations. They are tortured creatures waiting to be put to sleep. Your morbid interest in them worries me. Yeah, I better not go into it. It would be cruel to entertain ourselves with their deformities. Were there any able-bodied races you needed education on? Now that we've been through all the types, do I understand advanced race theory? You understand nothing. To solve the great race enigma you have to first ask yourself what is the race enigma you have not even worded the mystery let alone solved it how do i word the mystery you need to internalize what you have heard here okay. today then return to me this okay. clarity does not Let's internalize and come back. I'm doing all this just to go in. I don't know. I, don't I know cannot what. possibly imagine what else we have to discuss, Tibere Vasholian. Your love for disco music and venereal disease. What are your tattoo, those tattoos of your supposed to be? Racists are generally not very good examples of their race. <laughs> and you're the one. Yeah. I am not like them. I am craniometric. 
perfection. I have taken the trouble to permanently draw a phrenology grid on my skull I think and he features. Like a this book of clear ass doubt. words and just arrange them randomly in sentences. The drawings are precise and look true to their pseudo-scientific ambitions. One thing, however, it is not entirely free of throwbacks in the phylogenetic tree. His large jaw, for example, could be a trait indicative of criminalism. Also, his earlobes could be small. First, let's internalize this thing. Advanced race theory. A mass of fantastic race swirl. Oh, by the way, I, I just noticed the pictures. Okay. Look at those. <laughs> a mass of fantastic races swirl in your head. Desert pygmies playing with their own excrement. Koiko juggling potatoes, eczema ridden mo, ma, uh, ma wounds. How did the encyclopedia read it? I forgot. Grinning and dancing on wooden clogs. Everyone is there. The whole race gang. Plus some that you may have come up with yourself. The thieving subgift and the seolite cast of fortunate hatching. Some kind of scheme. In the eyes of his, this race, Empyrean. A vertigo reaching up to the heavens, you sense something drawing near, nearer. Okay, if I internalize, temporary research bonus minus one drama, fooled by the absurdity, and it's one hour for the second. Okay, let's internalize. Okay. So I can talk to him. Uh... You sure I'm not craniomech and superior to you? No, you're right, that craniomech. Are you sure? I mean that Joe is clearly an... I'll go with him. Correct. Correct. Okay. No. Uh, know anything about this mug? He does not so much as glance at the object. Oh, anything about Stop it? showing me your pathetic cup. I have no interest in it. He had nothing to do with it. Okay, thank you, drama. Even though you're at minus one. <laughs> uh, you serve the union, don't you? Are they white? Oh, don't be vulgar. White or not has got little to do with this. The race enigma runs much deeper than hmm. that. Turn his eyes towards the harbor, seemingly bored with you. Yeah, but you still serve them. How do they factor into your life? Keep telling yourself that. I'm sorry, of course, I understand now deeper. Mr. Clare is a man of vision and means. He has the will to confront international capital. Something your race, naivistic communists, never did. I'm no communist. Of course you are, clever Sholian man. The failure of communism to challenge the world order is the core of your race fate. All around you, the fruits of its defeat. Individualism, rock and roll music, sexually transmitted disease, above all, Rampant multinational finance still reigning large. Tell me where have you gotten your love of pathetic communism from? Degenerate youth culture? Rock and roll music? Youth culture does not affect. I have gotten it from disco actually. Offshoots of the Seminese people invented disco while having sex under the influence of cocaine. It is a shame upon my yeah, race. Yeah, your fault. But what is done is done. I am not surprised you enjoy it so much. This has happened to many of the side products of the inevitable cultural victory of the Seminese race. Okay, I'll ask who are the Seminese? The South Island race. Aplogroup R4R. 
We are the rightful masters of the Insulindian Archipelago. We descend from the Areopagites of ancient Pericarnassus and arrived here 4,000 years ago. Millennia before you. We are the future. That is all you need to know. So you were born and raised on the islands before you moved to Revachol? I am a descendant. <laughs> the narrow streets of Luir like, <coughs> are with me. It's advanced racism, but dreams. it's not really racism. I stuff. see young Simonese women walk Brainwashing. into the grey mass on Ile de Fontaine, <laughs> waiting on retardance. immaculate conception from the pay. We did come from the islands. No. I have heard about it on the radio. Uh, I don't want to offend yes. you. Yes. This could have made him more open to discussing the race enigma with you. Ah, shit. What do you think about this? Uh, let me go back. Mm. Let me go back to it. Oh, uh, don't be for Mr. Claire is a man of vision and means. Of course, you above all, I'll go through the rampant multinational finance still offshoot. I am not surprised you in the south. We are the f I am a descendant. So you the did I have heard about it on the radio. So you're not really Semenese, you're just from Revachol? I'm from Kuron. And no, it is not just in Revachol. The city is central to the Semenese strategy. Spread into the world. There's no trade idea what he's talking about. Our just using fancy words. Dominate the world. <laughs> you have heard enough about our phylogenetic secrets for today. You Extra have minutes. extinction to come to terms with, and never get in into the harbor. Well, thank you. Uh, who told me about it? Conceptualization. Thank you. Uh, so, in the correct mode of taxation is ready. Cool. Uh, Kim, what do you think about I this? I think this racist is better than the last. But uh, the next racist will be the really good one. He was definitely better. That will be the... How do you know that there will be a next race? That will be our lucky racist. I like the previous one. How do you know there that? There always is. Uh, race is also. reality. Okay, what do you I think, think this us? racist is better than the last. That will be the... That will be our lucky race. He will grant us three wishes. <laughs> Your pedomorphic friend has quick wits. A protruding occiput and an indented zygomatic bone. The lieutenant does not flint. You should keep him close. The congenital defect of farsightedness does not render him a complete invalid. He still has the use of his mind. Okay, so indirect modes of taxation. Okay, what was the solution? Turns out those financial oversight committee gangsters stuffed millions of hard earned dividends away in the last place anyone thought to look the hearts and minds of everyday River Sholians. You need to spread that deregulation gospel to the people, tell them about that foreign fear tax. Preach that 98% gross burden. Preach it, preacher man. Set the brothers free. Taxes are racist. Mm -hmm. Ultra liberal dialogue often gives just one real. I am ultra liberal forever. I need to sleep. Minds one empathy. Thinks he's a hustler or something. Okay, sure. I'll, I'll leave it. I'm fine without empathy for now. I need to. Okay. I'll be back.
after I figure out this race theory thing. Maybe he would let me pass then. Yellow mailbox greets you with. I, I the worn and beaten wooden planks of the bench do not look overly comforting. Hmm. We can sit on benches after we've solved. Okay, let's go down. On the cover stand, a very muscular man surrounded by flames. This book has a rose, a pistol, and half naked dam to cover it. The book is titled Man from Yel Dal and the Wildfire. Okay. A book about the future, the government reads your mind using radio technology. A book about boy dero culture it promotes freedom and roaming upset upstream. This book you don't really understand what it's about nor does it seem important. This is a book about Ate. Hello. Hello, sir. Hello. Step right in. The store is open. The younger with chubby red cheeks, wave at you, smiling her nose, it's also red from the cold. Hello. Are you interested in a new and exciting book? What kind of sort of It's a bookstore, really? sir. We sell books, postcards, and some board games. Mm -hmm. It's called Crime, Romance, and Biographies of Famous People. Whoa, 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 whoa. Hold your horses, little girl. Ah, shit. Encyclopedia failure. Whoa, 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 whoa. Hold your horse. Uh, oh my god. <laughs> By failing encyclopedia, I don't know what's a book, a postcard about me. Don't be ridiculous, I know all this. You're fooling nobody. <laughs> I know all this. God damn it. Sir, are you okay? You've been standing here silently for a while now. It's okay if I ask you some questions. Okay, sir. I'll try to answer any questions you have. I hope they're about books. What is your name? My name is Annette, sir. My mum, her name is Plaisance. She owns the store. She's inside, minding the register, or organising the stock. The girl gazes at the windows, then suddenly jolts her eye wide as this free calling Feel something. free to step in and browse our wares. And you're standing out here in the cold because... I'm signalling that the store is open. Otherwise, people might not know. They'd miss out on the crime, romance and biographies of famous people. I could help by brutal dismantling them. Such a good trooper you are, already learning the value of hard work. Thank you, sir. I'm happy to help mum out with game. the store. Oh, this is the ultra-liberal thing. Awesome. More ultra-liberal things. Can My I, name can is I Annette, get again? sir. Feel free to step in and... I'm signalling that the ah. store is open. Otherwise, people might not know. They'd miss... Thank you, sir. Okay. I'm happy to help mum out with the store. Going to be at school I do my studies at home at the moment. I have to help mum keep this place running. What is school, anyway? School? Well, mine is a big yellow building on Boogie Street, and the people there run it. They say it's a charity. Which one will give me money? School is stupid, you're lucky not to be there. Is going to school more important than this? Mum says it's necessary to do both, because it builds character. Mum says a proper worker is dutiful. That's how you get ahead in life. You succeed. How the business going? Mum says it's peachy. She was a little afraid at first. There's talk about this house being cursed. Behind her, 
The window has been boarded up. You sense the boards creaking, twisting for a second, and some kind of doubt in her tense shoulders. Good to hear that's going well. I'm sure there's nothing cursed in what Cursed world. in the way that makes them say that no business has ever really thrived here, sir. That they all go... Bankrupt? Exactly. But we've been doing fine so far. I don't think curses are they real. They shouldn't be, but they seem real. Anyhow, they say that these grounds are doomed for businesses. There's not doom, but your mother should learn from them. Of mistake. course, sir. Um. Okay. What is this crime business? Crime fiction is about murders or burglaries or things like that. And the work of a policeman or a private detective who's trying to solve a crime and catch the criminals. Uh, I need to know what crime is. <laughs> okay. Uh. Uh. Hmm. That bad. Crime is what we were solving before this conversation Thank you, began. Kim. Why would anyone want to read about crime? It's exciting to people, I guess. They get to imagine dangerous things. And it's kind of like a puzzle, where you can guess who the criminal is, or how the good guys are going to catch him. I'm a policeman myself, by the you way. You don't look much like a policeman. Ah, well, what does a cop look like then? Didn't mean to offend, sir. Sorry, sir. It's just that you don't look like Dick Mullen. Not your body that's important in police work anyway, it's your... Head, yes. Yep. Not head, child. Heads. Flexibility, there are millions of different people out there and you have to get into their head. Something, you gotta be the killer to catch the killer. Isn't that very dangerous? Policemen live and breathe danger, little girl. Mullen obviously lack the ch... Chameleonic skill. Unlike you, sir. He's just a fictional character. He's no match for you. Indeed. Maybe you can show me some real police work, sir. Like in the books. Oh boy. Oh boy. Oh boy. I'll fail it one time. I'm gonna fail it. You fail to deduce anything substantial. She waits intently. Oh boy. <laughs> uh, you are a girl. Come on, anyone would notice that. Ah shit, it's locked. So what is romance? It's the type of book where there's a rich lady and she has to choose between the good man and the bad man. Just my last thought, perhaps imagining herself in the Or situation. there could be a story about a poor lady getting a rich man. It's about man and lady business, sir. What about a poor man getting a rich it lady? Happens. But usually the guy gets rich in the process, or should actually be rich himself, but has lost his family property unjustly, like during the revolution or something. I Those see. are unhappy books for most of the pages. People sad about what they have lost, but then it all turns out just fine in the end. What about when both of the men are bad? These are not very common. You can't have a choice between bad and bad. Nobody wants to read a story like that. What if it's written well? well Maybe then it's fine. Maybe if the lady then decides not to pick either because she doesn't need a bad man. Yes, that would be interesting. Mm. What about when everyone is poor? That's really not a proper romance story. That's more like everyday <laughs> life. <laughs> Something you have to write about real life things. Not in romance books, sir. These are about nice and pretty people and everyone is happy in the end. Mm. What about a book where the man and lady business doesn't work at all? I haven't read many of those. Maybe you should ask mum. Yeah? You think she has one about an excruciating painful breakup? I don't think it's a romance story if the main characters break up though. No, no, think about it. One where they plunge into a torrid spiral, spiral of pain and recrimination. Rec Only it's really long and drawn out. Scared for, scarred for life, phantom limb. Um... No, I don't know. Uh -huh. Doesn't ring a bell? Alright, I'll ask your mom. Yes, she knows books. 
Definitely. What was that? Huh. An idea for an unfinished novel stuck somewhere in your forebrain? Nope. That's enough romance for me. I have other questions. Maybe some about other books? Who are these famous oh, people? Oh, kings and queens and generals of old. Or artists and writers. Or musicians. Those kinds of people. There's usually something extraordinary about them. I think that's why people read them. To find the secrets of their fame. Seems like most people who read those books fail to get more famous from reading them. Reading those books doesn't make the reader more famous, does it? But it does make the famous people more famous. Mm. Fair. <gasps> Fame sounds delicious. Maybe someday you will write a book about me one day. Someone will write. Famous for vain people, I have better things to do. These famous people sound like a bunch of dorks. Why would they do that, sir? Because I'll be a superstar cop. In the paper and everything that shows them. Hmm, why indeed? I'm just an old tired cop. What use am I? You're not that old. Maybe you'll do something really important. Something that wows the world. I think so? Yes, there's hope. A lot of famous people hmm. got famous late. Or even after they've died. Yeah. You're certainly the type who might find fame posthumously. <laughs> who knows? You might even get famous for the manner of your death. Fuck you, Inland Empire. That sounds like a nice story to tell yourself at night. Maybe fame isn't that important after all. Some can't get noticed, others can't get properly forgotten. That's life for you. But what if I get famous only through dying? I couldn't enjoy the fame at all. I don't think you should live life with that fear. Just try to be the best you can. You can't stop calling me, sir. I'm a butter working. No, man. sir, I can't. It would be too tiring to refrain from it. It's already tiring enough to remember to say it all the time. It's nice of you to say I could stop, though. I get you. I, for example, can't stop making this face point at your face. That's a friendly enough face, most of the time. Okay, bye. See you around, Annette. Okay, so now let's go check her mom. Hey, what's here? Old sport magazine tucked away in the dark corner. Well, let's talk to the mom first. Welcome to Crime, Romance and Biographies of Famous People. My name is Plaisance. Be welcome and please take responsibility for the energy you bring into this space. Before we go on, you seem to be well off enough. Can you give me some money? I feel there won't be an opportune moment to escape. Sir, don't be ridiculous. I certainly will not give you money. I would be doing you a grave psychic disfavor. One has to earn one's success, even if but, one but, is a police but, officer. I need to sleep. Handouts are nothing but manipulation. All they do is make you dependent. Certainly, there are good things to be said about dependence. Hmm. Thank you, Rhetoric. I would forge ties between us working people, good practice for fighting our common enemy. You misunderstand me, I am powerful feudal lord, I demand tribute, this is about tradition. <laughs> Damn, you're right, what kind of business relationship would that kickstart? Excuse me, I don't even know why I said that, a lapse of professional. It would forge ties between us working people, good practice for fighting our common enemy. Now, hey there, sounds like someone isn't taking responsibility for the energy they bring into this space. Fighting enemy. My philosophy is everyone just getting along. Fine. So you are the owner of the store? I am. The proudest owner of our little shop of culture. I like this fan. Uh, what if I want to buy a book? Then why are you talking to me? Everything is on the shelves to browse. Don't you feel compelled to buy anything? See those shelves there? Go. She might control. She might controlling me. So, what type of book do you have? Everything is on the shelves. Take a look yourself. The shelves compel you, don't they? Mm -hmm. All right, I'll take a look. She then. smiles and nods, seemingly relieved. Your daughter is the one standing outside, right? Annette. Yes, my daughter. I hope she wasn't slacking off again with her ah. nose in science fiction. Tell me, was she at her post doing her job like a proper girl? Yes, of course. Wonderful! Did you talk to her? Yes. Great! I'm 
a scale of one to ten, how compelled were you to buy books after talking with her? Ten. She's certainly very polite and helpful. I got your back. My precious. Her dedication brings joy to my heart. If you have children, I hope they turn out as great as my Annette. Mm -hmm. I'm here to dismantle the free market and abolish child labor. Uh, it's a great value. As a young girl should be, with the proper attitude, she'll have a bright financial future. Okay, let's The woman something. before you scans the store, her shoulders rigid and tense. Let's talk Every about now the and then, she nudges her glasses. Cursed? Who said that? Annette? I will have a word with her. This place is not cursed. It has a robustly magnetic energy. Good for commercial activity. My business is thriving, sir. What in God's name is she talking about? Okay. Farewell for now. Oh, there's something there. Okay, let's see. Gift books and molten candies. The display rack is brimming with worn paperbacks featuring an extremely muscular, sword-wielding barbarian on the cover. Yamdal. Nearly all the titles contain the word Hyundal somewhere. Look through the display of books. Rows and rows of Hyundala men blur your vision. You make out some titles. Man from Hyundal and the Mammoth Riders. Man from Hyundal, Return to Hyundal. And the Solipsistic. Man from Hyundal and the Hyundal Man. Good God, how many are there? Maybe a hundred. Man from Hyomdal and the sages at the end of the world. Man from Hyomdal and the false god. Man from yeah, Hyomdal yeah, 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 yeah. and Is the school. Old? Not even close. Man from Hyomdal in hell. Man from Hyomdal and the forest of slaves. Man from Hyomdal under the lake. Man from Hyomdal, Hyomdal burning. There's nothing of interest. Okay, Only okay. silence and the cosmic background pain radiation. Okay, I, maybe I can try it again later. Storekeeper, tell me about the Muscle Man books. Oh, Man from Hyundal. A very popular series of adventure novels. They're awfully immoral and violent books. Why are they so Blood popular? Blood and violence, scantily clad women, epic narratives, all okay. those mystical things he encounters. They're bound to grab those with little imagination and nothing to do. Sounds good. Which one should I start with? What does with? it matter? They're all the same. However, the customer is always right, they say. Yes. If you're a novice of the series, I'd recommend Hjelmdalaman, the man from Hjelmdal. It's supposed to be a good introduction to the series. Nine dollars? I only have six cents. I can't sleep even. Go fuck yourself. Okay, what about this? A small mountain of colorful board game boxes. There are numerous types of games for all ages. A lot of shelf space seems to be taken up by Wirral related yeah, merchandise. Pile of Wirral -related An items. endless variety of source books, lore books, and codices and litter the table. The topmost book is titled Welkin Compendium, second edition. There's also a large hardbound tome with intricate cover art, The Hunters of Catawack, Boreal Creature Compendium and a pick-your-path adventure game book titled Tales of Wirral, Cavern of Velcrog. Books in a board game section? Who wants to read books? I do. Maybe I'm not anything that really catches my There's eyes. a box that says Wirral, third edition mega setting supplements module. The side panel notes, a fantastic adventure board game, new maps and miniatures. A sticker on it displays 25 real. 25 real. What the that fuck? price is steep, but then it's the third edition mega setting supplement, so uh, it makes sense. I can't pay it. Storekeeper, what board games do we have here? Wonderful board games, sir. The Viticulturist is a classic for sure, or perhaps you'd like Archipelagos of Insulinda, a very educational game for those Where interested did in geography. Where they get all those names? Raoul Britta is a fun game of economic competition but can get quite intense after a while. We have games for the whole family. You can play with your children. Who are you going to play board games with? Mm. Do you have friends or family? 
Well, I have children, a family. It certainly feels like whatever you are Oops. will die with you. Oopsies. Look at me. Who wants to have children with me? That's kids, friend, chicks. I have all those. Don't be so hard on yourself, sir. You just need to clean up a bit. And technically, friends are a bit like family. For playing with friends, I'd recommend Suzerainity. It's a civilization building game where you build a civilization, then set off to brutally colonize and repress other civilizations. It'll cost 12 real. I have no money, so what are about all these Wiral things? Lousy auras there. No, role playing games are popular among those types. You know, who are into those kind of things. Personally, I don't like it. I Not do. at all. I've heard they turn people into occult enthusiasts. Mm -hmm. That they have rituals mm -hmm. where they try to summon entities. Mm -hmm. Highly immoral stuff. Mm -hmm. You can still buy them though. Okay. I'm gonna leave. I don't have no money. Anything down there? The book collector, the national recipe of Arda. They all about lake trout. Arda is the is the Silmarillion world, the Lord of the Ring. World. Middle Earth is in Arda, the, the like the planet. Let's check upstairs. What's this? These shelves are overburdened with books from the same series. You see the name Dick Mullen over and over. Look through the display. Crime books. fiction is a disgrace. An asinine misrepresentation of the physical attributes of the arduous everyday work of actual police officers. These books greatly overstate the excitement of police work, glossing over how long it takes to actually follow up on leads and eliminate dead end. What's more, they completely ignore the psychological hardships of year after year coming into contact with people during the worst days of their lives. Not a single mention of all the stress this work creates upon the officer's family. Detective fiction just doesn't tell the truth at all. Now, would you like a list of all the books found on the shelf? Sure thing. You see, Dick Mullen on the job. Get me Mullen. The stalwart yeah, and yeah. a killing is declared. Dick yeah, Mullen yeah. in the murder house. Dick Mullen the dies. Final owner. Turns out he faked it to solve a case. Uh, are there any more? Yes. There's also the dame who did it. Farewell. Uh, my tragedy calls for Dick Mullen. Uh, Another one with fa uh, After all this, you still haven't found the answer to the one question that matters. Who is Dick Mullen? Who is Dick Mullen? Your quick eye notices Mullen's a success. small caterpillar crawling across the spine of a book. The title reads, Dick Mullen. And the mistaken identity. What do we have here, Mr. A worn identity. paperback from Dick Mullen's classic Hard Boiled Phase. The premise seems to be that Dick Mullen is framed for the murder of his best friend and has just a few days to prove his hmm. innocence. What the, why does this Could it be me? the motifs of unstable identities and shocking betrayals? That's probably light. I'm a complicated guy full of contradiction. Then this is the book for you. I don't have money. Storekeeper, what's all this Oh, crime, robberies, murders, even sexual crimes. We're fortunate to have Dick Mullen and his stories to sort all that out. You're a, a police officer, apparently. You should buy all of these. Mm -hmm. They really do teach a person how to be a proper detective. Look, reading about Dick Mullen would not actually make you a better detective. Thank you, Logic. And it's challenging, like if I failed it, what would happen? I would like, I have to buy it to be a better detective. It's a tome of fascist magic, rather candid. A quaint picture book brochure, very colorful. Okay. The plaque on the shelf the reads, there. biographies of famous people. You see a large variety of names. None of which ring a bell. Look through the display. Browsing through all the books with all their names makes your head spin. None of these seem important or relevant. It's all just vapid egoism. Suddenly, a particularly odd title catches your eye. It reads, High Speed Love, the tragic true love story of Jacob Irv and Alfie Delatraz by one Cecilia Averbrook. What's it High about? Speed Love 
chronicles the romance between two of the finest tip-top tournay racers in history. One of them is the madcap driver, Jacob Irv. His blonde mane graces the cover. Next to Irv's life story, you see a slim biography of an Occidental rock star called The Anti-Star. He's famous for shooting morphine into one of his eyeballs oh, no. and cocaine into the other. Okay. Next to that, Rivasholian radio personality Guillaume Bevy stands in front of a rundown drug den. He's a permanent fixture on Channel 8, reporting on real life crime and ruining cops' days. I really must insist you buy one of the books. Mm. Reading them is not for free. Do still browse though, but not too long. I'm sorry, I did not mean to rush you. You are browsing. Go ahead, take your time. Hmm. Time is commerce. Lord keep anything to note. I would shed. say the greatest innocence. Yes, most certainly. It's an important educational tool delving into the depths of history, religion, and their relation to innocentic power. Hmm. Who or what is an innocence? A very influential historical figure. But surely I don't have to tell you that. You're a law officer, and law officers have at least some education. The book is also very daring. The author aims to re-examine the universal understandings of the innocentic system, creating a fresh vantage point and a shift in the tired order of things. I thought it was about which of these innocents is the coolest and greatest. Perhaps for a layman, deep analysis is necessary to peel back the multi-layered meanings. Do her words seem vague and abstract to you? Yep. Certainly, it. it's prudent for a person to have at least an elementary understanding of history and society. Imagine the chaos we'd be in otherwise. You feel like you should get this one. Definitely. It's important somehow. There's something personal inside. I have the money, but I won't, I won't pay for it now. Maybe I'll come back later. Wait, wait, wait. Look, there was a thought here, yes. Everyone knows the most interesting thing about fascists uh, was their magic. Okay, what's this? Several maps have been attached to a bulletin board hidden inside the alcove. They're held up by small pins. The board has come loose from one corner. The maps look old and faded. Your eye catches a map of Insulinda, a map of Revachol, and a map of Martinez. Look at the map of Insulinda. This large map displays archipelagos. You see a constellation of small dots on the light blue emptiness of the Insulindic Ocean. The largest in the northeast is La Caillou. You are here. Another far away in the southwest, Seminese Islands, Ile de Fantom. Ozon, Laurentide, Fas Alamir, Archipelagos, North Arcade Islands, all just specks of dust on the vastness of the Insulindic. On the edges of the map, the color fades into a blur of dotted lines, black and white, disintegrating into mathematics. In the northeast, a dust mite stands on the north coast of Caillou in a bookstore. It's you. Squint. First, you can see cities on the island. You can, on Caillou, Revachon, a single black star, on Ozon, Fondelier, and Vimandu, on Archipelagos, Croyan Moran, Villiers, on Semenai. 850 million people live on these little dots, an oceanic world of culture and commerce torn apart by history. 150 million, holy fuck. The ocean breaks apart into a tangle of cosines and azimuths all pointing into pale nothingness. Windy is the North Azimuth. Grad is the Northeast Azimuth. Samara is the East Azimuth. Seo is the West Azimuth. Isolas, they're called. Connections to other worlds. Words past the Insulindian, unknown to you. You only know you've never been there. You have little idea what they are. Distant stars, gods, but looking at them makes you feel almost non-existent. 
Whatever they are, the Isolas are immeasurably large compared to you and very, very far away. Perhaps they are gods. Gods of distance and out Possibly of dust. 17, what the fuck? Hmm, I wonder what they are now. <laughs> fuck you, conceptualization. Look at the map of Liverpool. The north coast of a verdant island is shattered by the delta of a river. It is the river Esperance. Countless bridges put the shards back together, connecting city blocks to river islands. La Delta says a great artificial heart in the center, teeming with life forms and construction. To the east, rolling hillsides, Le Jardin, Stella Marie, the suburbs of Saint Baptiste, swallowed up into the mega city. They sound rich to you. This is River Show East. Yeah, and rest of the river. Hold on. It's somewhere to live. Not bad. Then there's Jamrock. It's bad. People shouldn't live there, but they do. Then Forberg. It's almost as bad and much larger. Then Coal City. It's the worst. It's so small you can't even see it on the map. No, wait. There it is. North of Jamrock. The strip of coast next to the Greater Rivershall Industrial Harbour. It looks downright despondent. It's almost Coal City, to be honest. No, this is somewhere to be. This is all you have, but it's still something. Streets and sodium lights, the sky, the world, you're still alive. Okay, look at the map of Martinez. It's not really a map, it's a tourist thing. A picture postcard with buildings on it, drawn from an isometric perspective. A date in the upper right corner says 48. I wonder if this is fun to watch. I don't know if I should keep recording. Like I'm, I'm enjoying it, but like someone on YouTube just watching me watch long text. So I can just play. Still, it's detailed. Could be pretty useful for scouting ahead. You see the jagged boxes of an industrial harbor. Even the whirling in rags there. Storekeeper, can I buy this map? I'm sorry, officer. The map of Martinez is the only one available. The other two are not for sale anymore. And besides, you could scarcely afford them. That's true. They're quite valuable, though they might not look it. The map of Martinez is 90 cents, though. Why is the one of Martinez so cheap? That old thing. It's an out-of-date map of a tourist location that never was nor came to be. From when some design studio people tried to spruce the place up four or five years ago, they also renovated the horse statue, set up those coin-operated viewers, and designed the new street lamps. The place does not look like a successful tourist trap, does it? What happened then? They didn't get that far, for some reason. A shame the project never got going. Would be nice if someone fixed Martinez up. All these ruins are bad for business. Mm, 90 cents. Yeah, let's buy it. I don't know what it does, but sure. Always good to be informed of your surroundings. Did I get... Interact map. The worn and torn map of Martinez area. The worn map features the patchwork grid of the streets of Martinez, with directions to appropriately touristy locations. Year 48 resides on the upper right corner. Trace a path through the Your finger moves through the various streets, across Rue de Saint-Gislain and Rue saint sipa over saint Brun and Martinez North. Finally come into a halt on the spot where you are currently standing, although the map gives no such indication itself. Okay. I can I think. Uh okay, what's here? Another boring book just discarded here. The last one. This bookstore is not strictly about crime, romance, and biographies of famous people. 
There's also a wide range of paranatural literature. Look through the shelf. Amidst the various books, you find one written by someone named Matthias W. Dundas. It's about wholeness, unity, balance. These three things are very important to the working class mind. The point of the book, and many others on this shelf, is to give people medicinal advice in situations where they don't have access to paid health services. Okay, how does that work? It serves platitudes, while also telling everyone that traditional medicine, the kind people don't have access to, and which costs more than this book, is garbage mm -hmm. and would only give you cancer anyway, <laughs> without even curing your cold or anything. Yeah. Wholeness, unity, balance on the other hand, can basically take care of anything. Sure. Though it is important to note, when it's up to your mind to heal yourself, then it's because of your mind that you're ill in the first place. Ooh, true. I never thought about this. The book features chapters on topics such as how to find magnesium. It even lists plants you can harvest magnesium from. How to continue drinking if you're an alcoholic who has destroyed his liver. And, and there's even a chapter on the ancient Serais tradition of using duck gall bladder preservatives to treat and prevent sexually transmitted diseases. Pre and post factum apply. Nothing worth buying. This is just mundane garbage. What's even paranatural about this? Uh, Inland Empire, I have plus one because I heard about the curse, minus one because I don't believe in curse. Let's try it. The throbbing in your head increases with every passing moment you gaze at this shelf. Suddenly, as if out of nowhere, a small green book becomes apparent. The title of it reads, Medicinal Purposes of the Pale. What's the pale? The book contains very little explanation on the matter. This knowledge seems to be taken for granted. What's this book about? The book contains descriptions of various pseudo-scientific therapies alternative medicines and folk remedies involving the pearl, also known as le territoire. For example, it recommends vigorously swatting one's naked body with a venic or hand broom, made from the leafy twigs of a young birch tree from the near pearl. Oh, it's painful. It is supposedly invigorating and good for the circulation. What else? It also recommends consuming distilled spirits like vodka or whiskey that have been aged in the pail. Readers are instructed to cover these jars in a shallow hole just inside the pail What's and the leave pain? them there for 30 to 60 days, depending on the potency desired. And what does this pale age liquor do? Among other benefits, it is alleged to restore a damaged liver to perfect health. That seems improbable. Thank you, Logic. I should probably get my hand on some of that. What else is in there? How is that possible? I think I've got enough. How is that is possible? it any more improbable than anything else that human beings put their faith in? Fair enough. What else is For there? general health and well-being, readers are encouraged to take regular strolls through the pal. Though a sidebar cautions readers to limit each stroll to less than an hour. These strolls promise to cleanse the mind of worries and the body of toxins. Especially if the perambulator performs this ritual in the nude. Nudity figures prominently in a number of these prescriptions. This is exactly what you need. Uh, anything else? Of There's course. an entire section devoted to cures for men who are struggling to perform their marital obligations. Mm -hmm. Viagra. Well, I certainly don't need that. You close the book and return it to its place on the shelf. Yeah, I, I won't spend money on it. Good storekeeper, what books are these? Hum, sir, please, no browsing in that shelf. That wisdom is not for free. Okay. I can't have you end up, like, opening a police store next door and stealing my customers. Oh, no. Okay. Okay, so let's go and check this. You see a set of tattered curtains blocking the way to another room. A strange cage-like trinket dangles from the curtains. Excuse me, officer. The back room is strictly for employees only. Examine the shopkeeper. What's behind the curtains? Nothing. Now please go back to browsing the books. Don't you feel compelled to look at the books? 
The she, books are all you care about. If it is with her pendant, she's trying to do magic on me. She speaks almost as if she's trying to put a spell on you. Thank you, Cos. Urging you to buy more books. Oddly enough, the more she tries to draw you away from the curtains, the more alluring they become. Okay, examine the strange case like trinket. You see some kind of charm. An irregular polyhedron assembled from bones, sticks, and straw. Inside, a disturbing fish head with empty eye sockets stares at you. This is a traditional Seminese ward, meant to provide protection against ill luck, bad dreams, curses, and other supernatural scourges. Who are the Seminese? I know who are. I already talked a lot about Inhabitants that. of Ile de Fenton, yeah. the is Seminine Islands Seminese. down south. Aside from poking at it suspiciously, there is nothing else to do with the fish head charm at this time. The curtains remain shut before just you. just pull open the curtains. Just as you're about to pull apart the curtains, the petrified voice of the shop owner cries out once more. Sir, don't touch that. I told you it's off limits for the customers. Her hand has closed around her pendant, her fingers nervously playing with the telescope. Parapsychologically speaking, we're dumb if you decide to open them. I won't be held responsible for the consequences. It's too dangerous. Yeah, yeah. She looks away, mumbling. Why is everyone always messing with the curtains? Why can't they just buy books like normal people? Is this about the curse? That's why you're afraid? No, it's just a storeroom for the employees. I told you. Now please step away from the curtains. She's almost begging you. Ma'am, this is different. I'm a police officer. I need to get in there. Why? It's not like anyone was killed there. She stops abruptly as her hand flies over her mouth, baffled by her own bluntness. I'm sorry. I don't mean to be so impolite. Just mm. please don't go there. I can't allow that. You'll only make things worse and unleash the powers. The powers? But I sent this place calling for me. I must investigate beyond the threshold. You do? My god, even more reasons not to mess with the curtains. Just step away, dear sir. All right, I think about it for a while. Thank you. Let's just talk about this first, all right? There's no reason for you to venture into the unknown. Talking is always good. Go see what she has to say. There is something mysterious about the curtains. Be careful. The curtains, tattered with age and covered in dust, hang before you as if taunting you okay let's ignore them talk to her hello again esteemed officer and welcome to crime romance why are you so uptight about those curtains people. i just want to know what's on the other i already side. told you it's just a storage room for employees i don't understand why it's so important to you just let it go officer go buy some goddamn books you're supposed to be drawn to the books if it's just a storage room then why does it have a stone samanese word protecting it's just for decoration and something break okay fine it's because this place is cursed just like annette said they don't call it the doomed commercial area for nothing are you happy now officer happy that you've ruined everything something to her pendant how does this curse manifest itself? The curse is so much worse than you could imagine. It's a disease eating at the very foundation. A shiver is run through the woman as she looks around and dimly looks It's up. the curse of financial distress, of ruin and bankruptcy. She peers at the curtain again. Didn't, didn't that curtain just move? Okay. Okay, I'm a little confused. What does that mean? Everyone knows that all the previous companies in this building have sooner or later declared bankruptcy and their malicious spirits are still here, hmm. feeding off bad business practices and disappointing income statements. There's something wrong with this building, I can tell you. Uh, Ever since I arrived, curse. I've sensed an eerie lingering presence, as if I was unwanted here. Why didn't you just tell me right away it's the curse? It's not good to talk about the curse, not in detail. The negativism, mm -hmm. it's dangerous. Talking about the void wraiths angers them. Wow, void raves. You have new words. Yep. Have you sought help from anyone? Yes, 
I've contacted numerous parapsychologists and even a pair of Simonese mediators. They provided me with the wards. The wards helped to keep you the doom scant. at bay and protect us against you the darkness that so lies hard. further in the building. Even though now I fear it's not enough. Is your pendant part of the ward as well? Oh, this? No, it's a special Hymian amulet blessed by desert pygmy shamans with a spell of compulsion. It's to compel people to buy books. Mm -hmm. There are numerous spells cast throughout the store. I had the books anointed with a different inducement spell, for example. It's guaranteed to boost sales 15%. So that's all this business about me wanting to buy those books. Desert Pygmy Shamans. That sounds like a rather questionable way to describe a group of people. Yep. Doesn't seem like the spell is working. There are no customers around except you. There are hardly any customers in the store. Do you think it's really working? Sir, I am well educated in the commercial and esoteric arts. I know what to do and what to avoid. Have you ever thought about a sale? Maybe this could lure in some customers. Discount my wares? I can see, sir, that you don't value books very highly. Besides, this would only tempt the phantoms of doom. They can sense the desperation, you know. Would you like me to take the case? I could investigate, see if the curse is real. Most certainly not. I don't want anyone who's not familiar with the psychic arts to get familiar. involved in this mess. Uh, Stay away. Drank too much. Leave to the be. spirits be, so they can return to their slumber. My liege, you know what this case calls for? A para detective. Yes, I have a few more questions about the curse. Drama. Convince her to let you investigate the doom commercial area. Let's go for it. The time to fire up the old lie machine. Ma'am, I am a renowned private investigator, a paragon of law, and a specialist in all things criminal. I don't want to say no. <laughs> and I am his private partner, Jan Shaw. Together we run the preeminent spousal surveillance firm in Revachal. Shao is what the Saolite Empire was called in the Occident back when far less was known about so the people. The is it done. was a barbarian other, cool. ever so mystical, on whom you could project any kind of exotic fantasy. The legend of it persists, and a lot of people still think the Shao is a thing. We are truly private in our partnership. Once we've caught our client spouse in flagrante delicto, we blackmail them and pocket the money ourselves. Because that's what private investigators do. Now, I see that you are a married woman. What the fuck, Kim? Some penetrating sarcasm from your colleague there. What nonsense are you two going on about? This is not relevant at all. Fuck you, Kim, and for besides, sabotaging me. My husband would never do such a thing. We are proper people. Mind your manners, John. This isn't the great Chow Empire where you can talk about sex stuff so openly. All right, enough nonsense. The point is that we sometimes take on unusual case. Uh, let's do one. This is preposterous. A waste of my time and of no help to anyone. Looks Our sincere apologies, ma'am. No more nonsense. We are offering to assist you with your troubles. Pro bono. By this apology, there's a twin job I'm using in the lieutenant eye. That's right, and all you have to do is give us the key to the back door. Enough funny business, will you join? You just give us the key already? It's a good offer, ma'am. I urge you to accept our help. It may be the only chance to save your business. That's right. When not spying on the love affairs of the ultra-rich, we solve unusual mysteries by the Lori Lord. Way, what better way than to ask us? Oh my god, will you stop with that incessant yammering? It's too much. If you wanted the key to the back door, you could have just asked for it. Fine, I'll ask for it. Can you have the Absolutely key? Absolutely not. <gasps> oh, fuck you, locked. I have more questions okay, about the curse. Okay, but please, only a few. The woman Never before mind. you, Skip. Advanced race theory. Uh -huh. This should be interesting. Everything is calm in the eye of the race storm. Your mind is lucid and bright. The mind bending phylogenetics appear more distant, and to be fair, a little ridiculous. The great race mystery has cleared up. All that's left to do 
is verbalize your thoughts. Go and talk to Measurehead about your newly found insights. Nice. Rhetoric race to five, present five, conceptualization. Perfect. Uh, conceptualization, it was already six, so. Okay. Still wanna see what's behind this curtain. I'll be back. Let me go talk to that dude. Hello again, sir. This is the back door. I'm gonna talk to my racist as fuck acquaintance. Right to work! Right to work! You Shame don't have any tip you. on how to punch a guy. How do you say a really big race to your discarding your button? Not before you get in there and get your ass whooped. Learn by failure, I always say. He might have some advice. But you've got to at least try to fight measure head first. Return if you fail. I'm not gonna try to fight him. Hold up, wondering man. Hold up. Let's go talk to him about my newfound place here. Hello. The unpromising. Race pupil returns. I think I know what the race enigma is. And? Shit, let me to the fucking harbor. Paradoxically, you plan to supersede the Occidental with their own race theory. This race craft is what rich people want us to do while they get all the money. It's just something you shock people with, liberal and progressive people. It's whether to be it's free. Let me check it again. What was it? Everything is calm in the eye of the race storm. Your mind is lucid and dry. The mind bending phylogenically appear more distant and to be fair, a little ridiculous. The great race mystery has cleared up. All that's left to do is verbalize your thought. Go to talk to Measure Head about your. I don't know what is it. Yes, your mind is lucid and bright. Okay. It's whatever you want it to be, it's free. It's just something you shock people with. Whatever you want so, to be. babe, when confronted with the harsh truth of his demise, the melancholic academician starts fiddling in his own genitalia. His bold spot betrays that he is a conclusive master. What the fuck? That's disgusting, Jean. It is. Beneath the veneer of academic jargon, the liberal theorist is a beast. A sexual maniac and a deprived nihilist. Life is a game to him. What Words are meaningless. No one is accountable for anything. Nihilistic sex maniac. I take pity on your urges. You clearly want to enter the harbor bad. Like a little boy who wants to go on the potty. I can press the button for you. It will open the door. That's all I wanted. Very well. You may enter the door once. Our race conversation here has concluded. Finally. Let's go. Okay. Uh, what is the race enigma? Completed. Okay. I got an extra point. Oh, 
Why do I have so much conceptualization? Radio is emitting strange buzzing sound. Okay. Door is locked and cannot be opened from this side without pass card. Guess you have no choice but to talk to the union leader. Every worker member of the board is written at the top layer. And at the bottom the union logo and demand democracy. This is Dewey typewriter, the model name is on the back. A standard office file cabinet, the drawer seems to be locked. Someone left the coffee machine on. The dark liquid in the pot looks almost sentient. <laughs> this book left me. Okay, I won't read now. I don't want to pass time. Le Jardin, Oscar. Ooh, more stuff to sell. In here. On second glance. Someone has forgotten to properly close one of the drawers. It's unfortunate for the Union to just leave their paperwork lying around like this. Let's see what's inside, he thinks. Yep, open. The drawer opens smoothly. Inside is a well-organized selection of brown folders. Browse Hundreds folders. of documents containing logistical data. Two kinds of transactions stand out. Materials coming into Revachol from the outside world from Muindi, Grad, and even Ilmara. Okay. And the same materials being handed over to companies inside Revachol, Kuron, Coal City, La Delta, and Jamrock are listed among the many districts where the imports are being sold. Anything interesting? It's hard to make sense of this thicket of company names, dates, quantities, and percentages. You try to focus. But the lines are getting blurry. 42%, mm, let's try it. Delicious. Whatever's nice. hidden here is hidden well. Concentration isn't enough. Only a trained accountant with a background in logistics would be able to really make sense of it. Okay. However, there is a little handwritten note stuck on the side of the drawer. Look at the note. It appears to be a to-do list written in large, uneven capital letters. Remember, Leo. Everard's shoes, special whirling borscht, water Everard's plants, sweep office floor, more banners. All items on the list have been crossed out and the note itself is crumpled. Turn to the lieutenant, look him a to-do note with a list of errands for Everard. Everard Claire, probably, the head of the Debarders Union. One of his aides must have left it. Nothing incriminating here. The special borscht seems a bit odd in the list. Take another note. Remember, Leo, Everard's shoes, special whirling borscht, water Everard's plants, sweep office floor, more banners. All items on the list have been crossed out and the note itself is crumpled. The drawer slides shut smoothly. Okay. Calculus drama. <laughs> hmm, nice. I don't want to read the books yet. An imposing combination of a punch clock 
and the payphone is looking down at you from the wall. A note on the side says, tokens unavailable due to strike. Use change. change. The machine swallows your coin and seems to be waiting for your next move. They're facing challenging. Let your muscle memory dial a random number. Your fingers run over the dial pad. Nice. Zero, zero, five. That's the dialing code for Revachol. Four, nine, five, two. And a moment of hesitation before entering the final numbers. How much dial? Nine, nine, Eight. three. Calling. Calling. Still calling. Then. Video Revachol, 24 hour video rental. We rent 8 and 10 millimeter film for home use. This is Lamy. How may I help you? What is this place? Video Revachol is a 24 hour video rental. We rent 8 and 10 millimeter film for home use. This is Lamy. No, I mean, with this. Uh... Do you know me? No. No, I mean, what did this place to me? Sir, I don't know. It's a video rental. Hmm. Maybe you rent videos here. Why did I call you? Maybe you called to extend your rental period. Do you need to extend your rental period? Maybe. I don't even know my name, but... If you need any further assistance, you can visit us on the corner of Voyager Main. I can't help you over the phone. Are we done? Okay, I'll do that. The call is terminated by the other party. You're left with the discomforting sound of the disconnect tone. Okay. Can I sleep after 21? It's almost 21. Looks like someone left his tarpaulin cloak hanging on the railing here. The white rectangle of the Revachol Citizens Militia is clearly visible on its back. This is your cloak. What? You can feel it. Bennett, I think that's mine. Yes, it does bear the RCM insignia. And we are the only detectives in Martinez. You think I should get it? The service cloak issued to you by your station? Yes, yes I do. As your fingers touch the tarpaulin, it almost feels like the cloak wants to deliver a message of comfort what through is your my fingertips. Cloak doing here? I will shield you from the elements and give my life for yours. Aww. That's what the cloak is relaying. Cloak. Plus one esprit de corps, plus one shivers. Nice. What shivers? Raise the hair on your neck, tune into the city. Physic, physic base. My shiver. Okay, cool for city lovers, the wisest of the street wise, the genu genu genuinely supernatural. Shivers come when the temperature drops and you become more keenly aware of your surroundings. It enables you to hear the city itself, to truly belong to the streets. It is a supernatural ability. All wrongs plays out in present time. Scenes across the city happen in front of you, but who is speaking to you? At high levels, shivers may make you seem mad to the outside world. As you listen to the city, you don't listen to others. Your superiors may begin to worry with their low shivers, though you will seldom hear the city speaking to you, and if you cannot hear it, how can you ever save it? Collecting rainwater. Okay. What's this? Ooh. All around you, great machine in coins. First, let me see what's there. Numerous empty bottles of Commodore Red and potent pins. At least three packs worth of cigarette butts. Where do I go? What's down there? I'm lost. Opposite eye of halogen lights watches you emitting a low bus. I think this is the right way. I don't wanna go there yet. We first... 
of those empty wine bottles and cigarette butts on the ground. Someone partied really, really hard here. Why do I think that's me? Well, yes, I think we can say with relative confidence that it was you. Looks like I had a lot of fun. It really, really doesn't. <laughs> Let's turn our attention elsewhere and move on. Hmm. This is the night watchman's booth. The name on the door reads, Rene Arnaud. My eyes. Listen, it's okay to take a few minutes to yourself. Failure. Sit down and have a breather. Kim, I'm gonna take a quick look inside. If you must. But please hurry. We are pretty easy to spot up here. Nothing incriminating catches your eye. The cabinets are clean and their sparse contents meticulously organized. There's a framed photograph on the table. The it's a black and white photo of a young couple out in a street fair. The man is young, dark skinned, and dressed in a Royal Carabiner uniform. The girl is smiling playfully at the camera. Why did you take that? Something about this man piques my interest. I think this can be a side thing. I'm a cop, I think too well to collect evidence. Fine. But let's move. I don't want to be seen snooping around here. Have a seat, rest. The chair is not as austere as the rest of the booth. A thin grey pillow is attached to the seat, secured to the stiles by black ribbons. Three deep. Stale air floods through your nostrils. Not a single mote of dust floats inside your lungs, though. The inside of the booth is immaculate. Search for a little something, something to help you out. The drawers are empty save for old timesheets and receipts. One small box, however, does hold some cheap painkillers. They are slightly out of date. Read the side effects. Oh boy, where to start? Elevated risk of dementia, mm. mini strokes, prophet's disease, sudden death, sudden death, hair, death hair death, erectile malfunction, okay. critical flatulence, watery blood, black mucus, Uncontrollable weeping, increased sensitivity to La Opera, inoperable joint disorder, total spinal collapse. Maybe this was a bad idea. Kim, would you mind if I help myself to some meds? I'm not here to tell you what to do, detective. Fuck it. You take the painkillers. They are yours now. Oh, I got them. Nice. You stand and exit the booth. Extra for morals. Okay. Uh, nothing else here. So we can leave. White pine trees are printed onto the screen covering. Looks like a forest under snow. Faded industrial lettering on the platform. Balsam. Okay, I can't go there. Balsam means whale fjord in Arden. Okay. The shipyard ahead is oddly quiet. The great machines are sleeping. There's money. Nice. The speaker tower is silent. There is no work to organize in the yard below. The musk of oil and rust comes from the chasm in front of you. It smells like that. What's in here? I can, so maybe if I equip. Oh wait, I should check those. Photo of a happy couple, a black and white photo of a couple posing in front of a ferry wheel. The girl is young and pretty, the man clad in fancy uniform and smiling on the back. A very steady hand was written the word 
River Shoal Fair Summer of 2021. This laminated postcard offers a glimpse across the river. Okay, maybe those are good for selling. Uh, okay, let me equip this. Now, perfect. Fall Ultra Service Gloves, half light. Plus one half light. I, my gloves, current gloves are plus one for facing. Let's see what's half light. Uh, here. Half light. Let the body take control, threaten people. Okay. So half light is your flight or fight response. It enables you to sense in weight situation are about to turn. It injects palpable fear into your heart, fear that urges you to act before it's too late, to act even after, again, fear that makes you frighten others, it is the aggression that lets you squeeze every last drop of information out of a witness. At high level half light makes you ultra attuned to the world, it is perpetual feel of your own shadow of someone else's name or scent. Yeah, I already read this. So I can unequip this. There are more money here. Take all. Industrial size thermos smells like burnt coffee. Money. Give me money. Money, 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 money. Okay, I can enter there. What's this? The banner sags under the weight of rain and snow while waves on red. Container, container, I'll turn you nice and red. Container, container, put, put the, the logos on. on. Hmm. The lyrics to this container song are being made up as he goes along. Thank you. The accent is so thick, it's impossible not to notice he's Ubi from the vanishing peninsula of Ubisunt on Moondi. Container, container, used to be Walpines. Container, container, now belongs to Everard. Hmm. Is a sticker putter. The tiny man is so engaged in the earth does not know. Everard, Everard, Everard. He looks after everyone. Huh? Well, hey there. How can I help you, mister? I see you are not a union man, mister. Did you get lost? You're not one of them scabs, are you? Nah. What is this with people and scabs? I mean, I don't personally mind. Folks is just folks, you know. And folks gotta eat. He doesn't seem to be waiting for you to ask. Just some of the other guys don't look too oh. kindly on the scabbing kind, if you know what I mean, mister. You're Yubi, right? Oh, yes. Born and raised in Arayish, mister. Mum had to leave my dad after he got a bit violent. Took us here to the new new world. I was new about new ten world. then. Too old to lose my accent then. People say us Ubis are up to all sorts of trouble with sheep and other animals and whatnot. I just want you to know there was really never late. any of that where I come from. No, sir. Those are just nasty rumours. Thank you for clarifying that, sir. What are you doing with the containers? Oh, I'm just making some covers for them containers here. Yes, I am. Yes, I am. So it's easier for the crane operators to spot them. Okay, let's try the logic. The containers in the yard are green in Wild Pines livery, and the mountains rising behind Leo is all red in so blue he's putting, colors. He's, he's changing them. It's like some red infection was spreading outwards from the container yard's core. This looks like a massive redecoration operation, Kim. Yes, they are hiding it from the inside. All the red containers have the Debarders Union logo on them. Leo, has anyone told you why you need to change the covers? No, not really. Miss Evra doesn't tell me all the big things. Says I go and tell them to everyone. Hmm. Thanks, Leo, you've been very helpful. Oh, no trouble at all, mister. No trouble at all. Where is everyone? The harbour is empty. Oh, most of the guys are down at the gates, keeping the scabs from coming in. He leans in with the confidential look. We're on a strike. The whole union is. You don't have to work when you're on strike. Ha! We haven't worked for two months now. Hmm. So no one is working? <laughs> Not everyone is down there, of course. Mr. Everard is in his office, where he always is. And Jean-Luc is guarding the gate. But Titus and his boys got into some drunken trouble and Everard sent them on a nice vacation for a week or so. 
He stopped but seems eager to tell you more. What kind of trouble did this Titus? Is his, is his friends getting? Oh, into? I'm not really supposed to talk about that. That's union business. It's getting too late, I can't even read. <laughs> Him and his boy stirred up something in town. Probably drank too much and got into a fight or something. I heard Mr. Everett telling them to take some time off. But what did they actually do? I guess the boys got a bit too rowdy and had to let out some steam. I don't really know the details. That's just how boys are, you know. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I haven't been in a fight like since I was in middle school. Easy, Leo. Let's keep this on the hearties. Look at him. It's not going to be anything useful anyway. Don't fight it. Better to go with the flow. Rowdy Leo, what kind of fight did they get into? Did they kill a mercenary? Okay, Leo, let's hear about this fight you got into. I remember I was the runt of the class. <laughs> the bigger boys always used to pick on me. You see, I had a bit of a temper back in the day. Flew off the handle like nobody's business. But Mr. Everett and his brother always came to help. Once they beat old Noel Becker so bad he needed stitches on his head. <laughs> Noel never started another fight with anyone after this. Mr. Everett and Mr. Edgar are real nice guys, mister. You should go talk to Mr. Everett. I'm sure you'll be good friends. He's friends with everyone around here. <laughs> Do what yes, yes. Everybody needs a job, and this is mine. I'm Leonard, by the way. Leonard Bellick. But everyone calls me Leo. I'm like Mr. Everett's right-hand man when Mr. Edgar is out of town. And Mr. Edgar's right-hand man when Mr. Everett is away. <laughs> <laughs> Actually, Miss Beaufort is the right-hand man, but she's a lady. <laughs> okay, Miss Beaufort is a right-hand man. Good hard to chuckle again. Who is this Miss Beaufort? A real pretty lady with a skin like those Douai Sucre candy bars my missus likes so much. Them are real nice to suckle on once the dinner is done and me and the I missus sit suckling. down beside the radio. <laughs> I like it. But I can't listen to the radio all the time. There's so much to do around here and I'm always busy keeping things running here. Yes I am, yes I am. Yes you are. Hold on, who's this Miss Beaufort you mentioned? Oh Lizzie, she is a real sharp tool. Mr. Everett put her through some fancy school and everything, east of the river. Four years she was gone, and when she came back, she was all fancy and lawyerly. He respects that word. That's obvious. But she's a real nice girl. Grew up in this here neighborhood. Knows everybody and gets along with everyone. Real pillar of the community one day, I'm hmm. sure. If me missus and me was to have a child, I'd be real happy if she turned out like her. But she can't have kids. Oh. Dr. Lemaitre said so. And she knows about such things. Been a doctor for almost 50 years, she has. He sighed and fell silent, watching you meekly with his blue, blue so eyes. So Everett trained a lawyer named Miss Beefoot. Interesting. Mm -hmm. I think you're doing a great job around here, yes. Leo. Yes, this place really seems to run like clockwork. Keep it up, Leo. Well, thanks a lot. Coming from you, it means a lot, really. You didn't think it was possible, but the smile becomes even wider. Sometimes I feel some of the guys don't really get how much I bust my ass for them here. But you guys are all right. Are you the Leo who wrote the note to make more balance? Oh, yes, yes. I leave all kinds of notes for myself. That old head of mine ain't so good at keeping things in no more. I almost forgot about the borscht. Oh. What was that about the borscht? Oh yes, I've been taking special whirling borscht to the men every day since the strike started. <laughs> hmm. It's very, very good. Makes a man feel so warm and happy. I feel like borscht I can take on soup, Mr. Renadan's four dogs every time the lunch is done. Yeah, borscht is soup, I guess. Like some Russian soup, I just remembered. What do you mean by taking the soup to the men? Is it for striking? Yes, yes. I'm taking it to them. The borscht keeps them happy and in fighting spirits. Makes you all warm inside. They brew it in the whirling in rags. Hold up, who makes it at the whirling? Oh, the whirling's cook. He mm. makes it. Them is always They're talking with Mr. Mariana people. and that weird they language and laughing together. Talk a he lot doesn't speak what we speak. He's from Grad. They are so good-hearted that they just, they just talk. He doesn't... 
care about politics and sneaky bullshit. Something is off about this sport. I'm going to look into it. Oh, sure, mister. Sure. You do that. Yes, sir. Mm. What is the container over there? Point to the container suspended from the crib. Oh, that one. That should be empty as far as I know. Lots of containers here have nothing in them. They're just waiting to be loaded up. I'm looking for the leader of the Dock Workers Union. Oh, you want Mr. Everard then? Yep. He's an awfully nice fellow, he is. Him and his brother are both nice fellows. Sure they are. They've lived their entire lives in this here neighborhood. He coughed, then continues immediately. Guys like Mr. Everard and Mr. Edgar, his brother, are real good guys. Made marginalize what it is today. Mr. Everard and Mr. Edgar and I went to the same school we did when we were oh, boys. Nice. Easy now, Leo. I just want to know where I can find this oh, man. Oh, Mr. Ebra is where he always is. In his office, of course. He points to the two joint containers on your right. Oh. Okay, I'm off. Bye-bye now. Bye-bye, Leo. Nice talking to you. All right. Uh, yeah, I think it's... I need to check the special board. What's so special about the board to cycle of eating? Alright, I think this is it for this video. Next time we'll go into there and talk to Mrs. Everett. We got a lot of cool information from Leo, so... And something fishy going on with the containers. They are being recolored, so... Yeah, let me save my game. Ooh, awesome game. Time passed so fast. Alright, that's it for me. Thanks for watching and wise.